Hi, Eric here with 30 by 40 Design Workshop. Today we're gonna to be discussing board formed concrete, which we're using on two large site retaining walls on our Squid Cove project here in Maine. So we've just cast a small mock-up and in the process I've learned quite a bit and I'm eager to share that with you. Now we're all likely familiar with poured in place concrete. It's one of the humblest of building materials and it's unique in that it begins as a highly plastic slurry and after it cures, it becomes its polar opposite, extremely hard and durable. And aside from its inherent utility in foundations and its weather resistive properties, we can exploit this transformation from slurry to sculpture in our architecture. Typically, concrete is poured into large panelized forms made of plywood or aluminum. This results to varying degrees in a relatively smooth appearance. Yet, even smooth forms will telegraph knots and surface imperfections to the finished face of concrete walls once the forms are stripped. Now, board forming is actually an old technique that preceded the larger panelized systems commonly used today. And it's a method that accentuates concrete's plasticity. In lieu of plywood or metal panels, boards comprise the container or form into which the concrete mix is poured. This results in a finished wall imparted with the reverse impression of the face of these boards, including all the imperfections, the knots, and the gaps. It's this texture that we're after when we specify board formed concrete. It gives life to wall surfaces, subtly highlighting the process of their making, and for our project, it also links it back to the other wood textures we're using and the surrounding wooded site. So concrete is composed of four elements, water, cement, aggregate, and sand. By altering the mix between these ingredients, we can control how the concrete will perform over its lifetime and in the specific environment where we're using it. For exterior walls, we want a dense concrete and a high quality paste. It's the paste that predominates the color of a concrete wall. So we're using a higher strength concrete, which means more cement paste. And to that, we're adding a super plasticizer, which is technically known as a high range water reducer. This is an admixture that affects the cement particles, which are normally attracted to each other, and they tend to clump together in the presence of water. A super plasticizer binds to the cement particles and in so doing, leaves space between them large enough for water molecules to enter. Now what this does is it allows the water to hydrate the cement more efficiently. Hydration is the chemical reaction that causes concrete to cure or harden. Super plasticizer allows us to use less water, which makes for stronger concrete and still maintains its workability, which is typically a problem when we use less water in the mix. It also ensures that the concrete will readily flow into all the imperfections in the boards that make up our forms. The concrete mix is arguably the most important part of our recipe. We want lots of texture, so wood type and face figure is important. For our project, we settled on a local spruce, which was readily available, it was inexpensive, and it was pretty easy to work with. Most board forms use softwoods like spruce, pine, fir, or larch. Now we did experiment with finishes to accentuate the surface texture. We tried pressure washing, wire brushing, sandblasting with walnut shells, and finally with coal slag. For our test panel, we also included regular mill finished unplaned boards. And this is probably a good time to discuss the necessity for sample panels. They're just an absolute must and you only get one chance uh, to get the real thing cast properly and looking the way you intended. So Nate, our general contractor, built ours as a two foot by two foot by eight inch thick panel, which was enough to test out the board textures and a few different edge finishing techniques. Next, you'll have to choose board orientation and width. Now these are fundamentally aesthetic decisions, whether it's vertical, horizontal, fixed, or random width, uh, broad or narrow, but they can be used to underscore a particular design vision. We chose a horizontal board, which helps with the site wall to gesture to the horizon, which is helping us to reach out into the site. And we chose a fixed width board of six inches, which is a comfortable human scale proportion. And six inches also allowed our coursing to easily correlate with other elements of the architecture, like the deck, our lighting, and the interior and exterior steps, uh, which we've designed, which also relate back to the stepping site. Vertical boards will tend to make elements feel taller, while narrower board widths, regardless of the orientation, will accentuate directionality even more, making vertical orientations seem taller and horizontal ones seem longer. 
The more boards though, the more expensive the forming labor becomes, so there's a delicate balance to maintain there. To keep the concrete forms held together under the immense weight and outward pressure of wet concrete, the two sides of the form walls must be tied together. Now typically these form ties are made of mild steel and the tips are broken off flush with the wall face after the wall is cast. In most cases this is fine, but mild steel will rust and because our board formed walls are acting as aesthetic elements in the project, site walls near a large deck and a gathering space, we want them to look as good as possible. Complicating this decision was the fact that we opted to use standard plywood forms for the outer shell of our forms. This was to, for ease of setup and bracing and allowed us to line the forms with our wood boards. What this also meant was that we had to use ties that worked with our concrete subcontractors standard forms. So we priced out stainless steel wall ties instead of the mild steel, but the added cost was pretty significant, and as it turned out, it was more than our client wanted to spend. So we're planning to use the standard mild steel ties, and then we'll just come back and patch the holes after they've been broken off. Now fiberglass rod ties are another option if you're not using a standard form. They aren't expensive, they don't rust, and they're actually quite unobtrusive. But we had a hard time sourcing them uh, locally, and again, they didn't work with our subcontractor's forms, so it really wasn't a viable option for us. Now is also a good time to think about the corner details. Our retaining walls are doubling as a seating bench and a planter, so the corners are becoming really important. Hard edges on concrete don't perform well over time, as they tend to break and they sort of look terrible. So our contractor, Nate, mocked up a few different options for us to consider, and we settled on a small chamfer, which from a distance creates a shadow line that actually looks a lot like a hard-edged corner. We tried a true corner and a quarter round tooled edge as well, but neither of those looked quite as nice as the small chamfer. After casting the sample panel and discussing it with our client, we all agreed that the unaltered boards provided enough subtle texture for our needs, and this helped by reducing the extra labor cost of blasting every one of the boards. There's reinforcing. All concrete should have reinforcing to prevent cracking, and with that you'll also need control joints per ACI requirements. Concrete will crack, and control joints essentially control where that cracking occurs, keeping it contained rather than letting it spiderweb across a beautifully formed wall face. Especially long walls will require them, and you'll have to plan for these in the forms as well. Now there's also things like planters, which we're using. Uh, you'll have to form those and you'll have to reinforce them separately. There are bond outs for integrated equipment or devices, things like exterior lights, speakers, recesses, utility connections, drainage. Uh, if you're using a planter, that's especially important. And finally, you might choose to embellish the wall with any number of embedments, dates, patterns, emblems, things like that. That all needs to find its way into the formwork. Now for the concrete placement. Adding the super plasticizer will aid in the workability of the concrete as it will tend to flow into voids readily. However, this doesn't eliminate the need to vibrate the concrete as it's placed. But you have to be careful not to over vibrate or over consolidate it or hit the rebar when vibrating as that will tend to bring the aggregate to the surface and negate all the hard work of the previous steps. Vibrating keeps large voids or honeycombs from forming in the wall, which are not only unsightly, but they can also impact the longevity of the wall, allowing water to pool and freeze and crack it over time. Also, think about how you want to finish the top surface. For us, we opted for a hand-troweled smooth finish. Because of the variables involved, it's hard for me to say precisely what this will add to your project over a standard concrete wall. It will depend on height, thickness, job scope, details, board size, ties. In short, all the things we just discussed. However, the more information you can provide your concrete sub, and the more experience they have in placing board form concrete, the better your final price will be. So you should come in prepared to discuss the requirements and expect to work through the details together as you work to quantify the added costs. So to recap, the costs above and beyond a standard poured-in-place wall are boards and any pre-finishing that you choose to do to them, sandblasting or whatever, extra labor to install the boarding, any special form ties, stainless, fiberglass, super plasticizer, a higher strength concrete, any embedments or specialty bond outs, and potentially more stripping time. Now for our project's budget, all of this was pretty manageable, and the trade-off, we think, is priceless. 
I'll be sure to update the video once the actual site walls are poured and complete, and you can leave any questions you have in the comments.